big segment alert. Ryan Broninger is joining us. Because That's why. <laughs> big segment alert. I'm on. I wasn't on the rundown. No, you were not. I you was. Know, Ryan Prager's here. Let's give him top billing first. <laughs> That's exactly and, and go back to I you. Your thunder. Hey, I would have invited you, but you've tweeted that your phone's been crazy. Every time I call you, you sound annoyed with me. It's like when I call what? my wife about stuff, you're like, I am annoyed. What, Nuno? So, yeah, there's a reason I didn't. I was invite actually you. at Texas State 7 on 7, and I said, You know what? I saw the rundown. I said, I better probably come into the office. And I want to quick before we get into Prague's. Yeah. Uh, Jason Howell and Kay Drawhan are at St- Texas State 7 on 7. That's a bear to cover. Yep. I was out there this morning. Obviously, this baseball stuff is taking kind of my attention away from recruiting. Um, but those guys are out there, and they're rock stars, and they're covering it, and they're, they're wading through some muddy fields and some, some deep, deep humidity uh, to, to cover that. So I do want to shout out publicly Jason and Kay for uh, our coverage on that. And now we can get to the star. So, Ryan, I want to – obviously, there's some stuff – happening that I want to get to but I want this to be about celebrating you what you mean to this university to this program the season that you had the incredible Omaha experience that you had that made it better for us right as fans and and as fans of your game so just how has this week been for you because it has been a roller coaster of emotions yeah it's been a long long 72 hours I mean just getting back from Omaha trying to balance like celebrating all of all of what we accomplished and all of our guys and then also the weird thing about college baseball is you get home and within two days of a normal season guys are sometimes going all over the place so we've got some guys that are up in new york for some like mlb draft stuff and then some guys that have already gone to play summer ball so it was balancing being with those guys and getting your goodbyes and then also hearing some news that puts everybody kind of just in a holding pattern for for the next couple days uh, I want to go back to your start in Omaha because this segment, and we'll get into all the stuff that's just happened and that's top of mind for every Aggie out there right now, but I want, and I think David wanted this segment, as he said, to be a celebration of you and your teammates. So you went to Omaha and you pitched in a place where you had struggled two years ago, and you turn in one of the most legendary historic performances on a pitcher's mound that this school has ever seen – has that part of it hit you yet? Yes. Yes and no. <laughs> I think doing it was was awesome. Hearing the 12th man there, like really just getting the win in both, like winning both games is what was really important and really cool because we got to do something no Texas A&M team has, has ever done before. And I think that's what's been really special and it's stuck with a lot of these guys in this time of just uncertainty chaos and everything like we've been able to rally around each other and be like hey we still had a really really good year and yeah. we did something really special yeah, and i hope folks are and I, I think just based off my interactions with a&m social media in the last couple of days it seems like everybody's celebrating y'all it, do, have you felt the love of the 12th man especially as they're going through this coaching transition oh yeah i mean a, a few of us a few of the pitchers especially like me Brad, Lampkin, Sadeo, we went to eat as soon as we got back and everything was kind of starting to go on. And it's cool going to sit at just some restaurant here in College Station and you have people coming up to you while you're just eating and saying, thank you. Thank you for a great season. Like, it was a joy to watch. And, like, when people go out of their way to do that, just back here, like, I get it in Omaha, like, you're kind of the star there. But for that to happen here on just a normal day, like, that shows how much impact we had and, and how special it was. And they come up, they show their appreciation, and we're just glad that they were there to be with us. So you had the epic start against Kentucky, and then you get the ball in game one of the final series. And on, on short rest, on two-day short rest, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, come, uh, yeah. And I know you're a routine guy. So when you figured out uh, you guys beat Florida, you're getting the ball in game one. Take me through those couple of days of just your routine to get yourself as ready as you could to face a lineup who is historically good. Yeah, we, we talked about it right after the Kentucky start. We were like, hey, we plan on being here for, for a while, so take care of what you need with, with the trainer or just in a throwing-wise to, to be ready to go on, on Saturday. And I kind of just said, okay, I'll make it work. Yeah. So handled the first few days as normal and then threw a little light bullpen – uh, day early and <clears throat> was feeling good, felt all right. And at that point, it's just kind of you just do it. It's Omaha, dude. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> you're not gonna say no to a start in Omaha in the finals. So uh, 
felt good once we got going adrenaline really took over for the most part and and then it was really just just give it all i had like it was the last one for the year bearing something random happened in that game three but it was one of those like it's it's a finals game in omaha like you could you could feel at 20 percent, and you're gonna go throw it had y'all tied the game uh in the ninth there and it had gone to extras was that something you were prepared to do was give what you could yeah we we had talked before if it if we tied it up there in the ninth i would have walked down and then i think we would have gone evan back out but if we needed to get out of an inning get out of a jam it wouldn't have been extended but there would have been a few bullets down there (laughs) definitely So, so the ninth inning and let me tell you how I Aggie, all right? When I watch Aggie sports, I a lot of times I'm pessimistic. I hate to admit that your team for the last three years has made me optimistic. I always think there's a chance. And even on Teddy's last at bat, like I'm like, I think we're going to tie this thing right here. How was it for you with, you know, you're there, you're experienced it, you know these guys, you know what you can do. How was that like the, the last few minutes of that? It was encouraging. I mean, there was all, there's always a belief. And it was funny, like, we, we went through like before the game and it was like, all right, who's your pick to click? And for the whole week, mine was Teddy because he had just been absolute barrels all week. He had a ton of balls hard that just had great defensive plays. And he came up and it was like, all right, like, cool. We're going to keep playing here in <laughs> 10 minutes. Um, but that's also just that that's kind of the culture of the group that we had this year was that we were never out of anything, like it, whether it was really good or really bad, like we were the same group of guys. Yep. So... It was no different when we were in that hole down 6-1 or if we were up 6-1. It's it's, it's like the same group, and and that's what was really special. Uh, You're one of the few guys that – I say bridge. You were on both of the College World Series team. How much interaction have you had with that first group about – you know, because I thought, you know, they were table setters. Like, they were uh, foundation layers. Did any of those guys, Minnick, boast, reach out and say, hey, like, that was sick. Like, what you guys just did was awesome. Yeah, they did. I got I got some texts from, like, Dylan Rock, Cole Kaler, yeah. Trevor, Troy, like, like, all those guys. And it was really cool. Like, in my text with Cole, I remember we were talking, and he was like, congrats on a great season. Like, go, go finish this thing. I was like, thanks, man. Like, we're going to bring this home and you're a part of this like yeah. like those guys are a part of what we're doing right now and it's cool because i think they thought it but to see us like tell them that is really cool and they they felt a part of it they were bought in how many autographs have you signed the last 14 days oh gosh <laughs> too too many <laughs> too many <laughs> yeah well i know like i talked to your your mom and dad at the hotel and they were super proud of you from your perspective there's a lot going on it, it, if and I don't expect you to announce anything right here, right now. I know you and your family are going through a lot of stuff. We're getting ready potentially for MLB draft. What does your future look like through your eyes? Is it an either or thing? Like I'm either going to the draft or I'm playing baseball here? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing, especially right now, that I think some people need to to know is that everybody on this team wants to be here. And I think it's tough sometimes when you're asking – 19 20 year olds to make a decision when they have a career beyond college and mm-hmm. baseball sometimes they have to do what's best for them and i think we're seeing that so i just wanted to cover that part on some of those guys yeah. that are in the middle of making that decision but at least for me like i want to be here like if professional baseball and that that dream doesn't come at this point like texas a&m is the place that that i want to be and i think in three years i mean being an aggie and texas a&m has done so much for me like i don't want to give that up that's, that's, that's a, sick. That's that, that's a fantastic. That's sick, man. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of people in their cars and listening to you in their, their offices or maybe even on the internet wherever that are really pumped to hear you say that. And I want you to know, I want the best for Ryan Prager. Yep. That's what we want. And so if that's professional baseball right now, sick, go do it. You've earned the right to be a professional player. But I think in talking to you and talking to some of your teammates. A lot of you understand the value of showing loyalty to a place like this. Mm-hmm. No doubt. And I think with everything that, that guys have said, like, obviously there's so much uncertainty right now. Like, there's so much that can happen in the next 48 hours with everything. 
but I know everybody's plan A right now is like Texas A&M. Texas A&M is on the forethought of everybody's mind because of what the school's done for everybody, the fans, like, I think everybody feels what this place is all about. And that just aligns with what all of our guys are about. Were you, so before the segment we talked, you were shocked by everything that has happened. Take me through that, like, that jolt of like, what? Like, take me through your mindset when that all came down. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the best way to put it was just, just shock. It was like, you're kind of like a loss of words. And I think through the year, guys like speculate what could happen. Everybody mm -hmm. knew that the Texas job would probably come open. And the first name that would come to mind, even in our heads was, was coach. And uh, when you're speculating, it never really hits you. But mm -hmm. when it becomes real, it's like, okay, wow. And I think part of that is also some of the guys that have been here have gone through or at least on the pitching side, I've gone through three coaching changes now. Because whether it was from Childress to Schlosh, then you had Yeski to Max, mm -hmm. and now that whole staff to TBD. Right. It's just like, this isn't how this is supposed to go. Like, they're, they're, sometimes they're supposed, to, they're, or they're supposed to be some continuity throughout your college career. And um, I think that's kind of the hard part is there's just been so much turnover over the last couple of years where it's, it's tough to just, take it all in. I think it gets easier each time because you've been through it, but it's like, why does this keep happening? Did they, and this may not be a fair question, but did they seem distracted? Did coach seem to like, were there any signs that this was possible other than the speculation? Uh, not that I think I would have seen on, at least on the pitching mm -hmm. side. I mean, I thought, I thought Max was bought in with us all the time. Uh, we didn't really interact with Slosh as much. So, mm -hmm nothing that like stood out to me but it just i think when you're in omaha and all that like the rumors are going on it can definitely cloud somebody's mind yeah and i think that doesn't take away from what we were able to do no it I, enhances I, it yeah and i don't and i don't think I it would have i don't know if it would have changed anything but it could have yeah but it it's still it's still cool to to know that that we accomplished that, and that's that's a take on the players. With a hundred percent, a hundred percent, that the players on this team have done more unknowingly to endear themselves to the twelfth man and the Aggie Network for the rest of your life. And if you come back and play at Texas A and M, regardless, I think you know if, if you go play pro ball or you go play another year here, I think you are very aware of like what that has done for your future and. I think that's part of the selling point for this place, not just the baseball program, but for this place, right? Yeah, I mean, people, some of the guys were talking about this and like everybody that's here is an Aggie. And if you leave, like, yes, like maybe you, you're still an Aggie, but like depending what happens, like do you basically kind of throw all that away? Like nobody wants to throw that away. Like, if you're an Aggie for a year, if you're an Aggie for two years, you want to be an Aggie for life. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just what's really special about, I think, Aggie athletics, but really Texas A&M in general. Did it surprise you to see Shane and Stewie and Rudis and those guys come out and be like, hey, we're, we're in, dude. Like, let's rock and roll. Yeah. I, I was with Stewie when he made that post, <laughs> and he told me what he was going to say as, like, the, the, the caption. And I was like, all right, that's sick. And then <laughs> he posts it, and, like, 30 minutes later, he looks at it, he's like, Dude, this has 10,000 likes. <laughs> He's like, I've gained 5,000 followers in three hours. It's like, wow. Yeah. But then to see Shane do it was was awesome. And, and I was with Brad last night when he did it, and yeah. it was it was really special. Let me ask you about the the game against Texas and just overall the, the battles with Texas mm -hmm. and feeling that rivalry, right? And you saw it, and it, it was so intense here uh, at, at Olsen. And then Schloss decides to go there just – kind of those emotions of that's our rival even though they weren't in the conference you felt that you play them in the college excuse me on the on the way to the college world series and that's where your former coach ends up yeah I mean I think for in the big scheme of things like at least on the baseball world like Texas and Texas A&M it's baseball I think when the fans look at it and you look at it from a personal side it's like dude like what are we doing mm -hmm. like <laughs> like like, come on. But I think the rivalry is there. I think this probably just adds some fuel to the fire. At some. Least, 
at least for the fans or at least for the people here that have a personal personal interest in it so it's going to be really exciting i think a lot of people are looking forward to that series next year already i think people are looking forward to the football game but now they're looking forward to the baseball series a ton whether it's here in austin but it, it's definitely going to be one that i know <clears throat> every aggie baseball player that that won't be here will at least be tuned in on it better be ESPN next year. <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to pass up that opportunity. <laughs> um, when you go back and you look at this 2024 season, uh, was there a moment for you personally that stands out um, that, you know, if, if you come back, you're going to make more memories, but is there one moment that sticks out for you, whether it be walking off the mound at home or maybe the one in Omaha that's like, hey, like I, I really – I you personally feel like you did a good job of taking that in and you'll remember it forever. Yeah. The the one at the last one at home really wasn't that great. That was Oregon, so I didn't really get to take that <laughs> one in that great. But uh both of the ones in Omaha were were really cool because I thought what our fans did there, it it felt like it felt like a home game almost. Like coming off the field felt like a home game because of how many were there, how great they were. So um I think after Kentucky, I looked around kind of after that no hitter ended, and that was the loudest anyone's ever cheered for me to. Any of my own fans have cheered for me to give up a hit, <laughs> um, but but definitely did a good job of taking it in in Omaha because you're in a bigger stadium, you're on that stage. It's real easy to be stone cold walking off, but was able to look up and and enjoy it, and and that was really special. And then I and then I think one of the ones at home was that Vandy weekend so when sick. the crowd was awesome. We played really well, but also Hayden Shot started the Rattlin' Bog, yeah. and that just created this this new like jolt of fun throughout the program. It was like, all right, this is this is truly going to be the best year, but one of the best years of your life. Take me through what these next steps are going to be for just a lot of the guys. So Trev's going to find the ideal head coach. Hopefully that happens soon, like really soon. <laughs> and then I guess a lot of guys have to kind of talk to him and see what his vision is like. Just kind of take me through that and maybe some of the discussions you guys have had. Yeah. Uh, we talked to Trev the other day, and he was basically just letting us know that he was working his tail off and he was on the search and was going to find the best guy for Texas A&M baseball. Maybe not. He wasn't going to try to get the, the flashiest guy, but he was going to get the right fit for Aggie baseball because A&M has, like, a persona that it needs, and it doesn't just need just anybody. So – he let us know that, and then when we get somebody in, it's definitely a meeting, some conversations with them. Get where everybody's head is at, because whether you've got position players that are thinking about doing something else, pitchers that are, don't know what to do, like there has to be some some transparency and, and understanding what's going on. And, and then from there, I mean, we've got 15 freshmen that are supposed to be here on July 1st, so yeah. it's a lot of figuring that kind of stuff out. That That's when – a lot of the older guys, a lot of the vets can help on that side with, with some of the freshmen, getting those guys situated. And then it's just, I think at that point, now it's finding position coaches and, and all the all the logistics side of that. Let me jump in. Is it, would you think the right, if the right guy comes, a bulk of this team is going to stay? I think so. I think, I think it's hard for, for some of the, for some of the guys that maybe think they need somebody to help them get to where they want to go and mm -hmm. and that's fair like some guys need different things but I think if the right guy's here with with the right people around him I think a lot of the a lot of the Aggies want to be Aggies hey I, I, I don't know how much free time I'm gonna have to get to speak today mm -hmm. but I wanted to say this and get, get your thoughts on it um uh, which camera am I at Nick where am I at which camera well, right now you're there right, but we right can there. put we can put you on here and let's put oh, let's say right here uh Jason Hutchins is a dadgum horse. He's a rock star. Yeah. And he's over there yeah. by himself right now going through camps. And I don't know how much you, everybody knows about baseball camps. They are a, not, they're a circus. Yeah. And he's done it for 20-some-odd years as the director of ops at Texas A&M. So I think the camp part of it he can probably do, but he's doing it by himself. And he'll, you'll never hear a word of complaint from him. That guy loves Texas A&M. That guy loves Aggie baseball. He loves this fan base. He loves this community. And he deserves to be commended for the work that he's done in his career at Texas A&M, but even more so right now. The work he's doing right now at over there by himself, 
should be commended, and nobody, nobody should not know about Jason Hutchins and the rock star that he is. 100%. He's, he's a Swiss Army knife over there. He, he, he does it all, and to, to be the only guy up there with, with an office right now and, and still trekking away, like, I texted him the other day. I was like, hey, if you need help with camp, you let me know, and I'll be there. And he responds with, well, let me know whenever you want to work, and I'll put you to work. I'm like, dude, just tell me if you need help. He doesn't want to put anybody out. <laughs> no, no, but he just wants to work, man. But he just does it, and he 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 might be angry. He might complain on the side, but if you look at him, you'll never be able to tell. He still just he loves it. He loves this place. He he really loves camp. He loves working with the kids, and he he does it all. And and you're right. He is to be commended on on a lot of what he does here. Ryan, as I let you go, just so you know, my text machine right here hundreds of texts coming in thanking you for the yeah. season and, and i got texts from former players that yeah. you don't even know that played here that are texting me saying this guy is awesome our youtube page everything like it's everything's wow. fantastic thank you so much for coming in thank yeah, you absolutely Appreciate yeah. that. Thank ryan breaker he, he i mean absolutely. applause yeah that's yeah. my guy absolutely. right there i don't think i've ever for done his, that on the radio for yeah. his career yeah for just everything a, just a young been, man yeah. that he is yeah. yeah thank you ryan appreciate you thank you all